Hello, this is Arne Boring from 52 North. 52 North is an international R&D network with partners from research, industry and public administration. The 52 North company I'm working at is the legal body and services center of this R&D network. At first, in this talk, I will describe a project which 52 North is currently conducting for the European Environment Agency, or short EEA. The general aim of this project is to enable the sharing of environmental data of the EEA collected from various data sources in a homogeneous way all across Europe. As a requirement of this project, we at 52 North have developed together with S3 an open source extension for the new ArcGIS server 10.1. This extension resembles the functionality of an OGC sensor observation service and embeds this SOS functionality into the GeoServices REST API, which is currently working its way through the standardization process at OGC. After introducing the project with the EA, the second part of this talk demonstrates the SOS extension for the GeoServices REST API. The EA is a centralized European agency based in Copenhagen, Denmark. It is collecting data from several environmental organizations from overall 32 member states. Besides their responsibility to collect the data from the member state organizations, the EA disseminates the data and derived information products. The data then serves as a basis to support European decision makers but also to inform the general public. In a keynote talk at the ESRI User Conference 2011, EEA's Executive Director Jacqueline McLeod pointed out in situ sensors as an increasingly important data source for the EEA. Thereby, the relevant sensors are manifold, contributing to different data themes, which are air quality, biodiversity, climate change, and land use. However, this variety of data sources at the associated member state organizations leads to a significant problem for the EEA. This figure illustrates the current situation. The data providers offer their data in proprietary formats via FTP or HTTP access. To cope with this variety, the EEA has to write manually adapters for each new data source then, the data is imported into the existing infrastructure, which is based on ArcGIS server. The data is currently provided to data consumers via application-specific interfaces. Based on this project, the EA will promote in future the interface of the Sensor Observation Service, or short SOS, towards their data-providing member state agencies. Also, the redistribution of data at the EEA will be done via SOS interface. To realize this approach, an SOS extension for the ArcGIS server has been developed in this project. This slide shows the architectural concept of this SOS extension. Based on a geodatabase, which follows a well-defined data model for environmental sensor data, a map server is deployed within ArcGIS server 10.1. The SOS extension is added to that map server. This extension follows the GeoServices REST API design to serve the environmental sensor data contained in the database. The development steps towards such an SOS extension for the GeoServices REST API have been threefold. First, we have developed a data model for near real time observation data. This data model is aligned with the Observation and Measurements, or shortened O&M 2.0 standard from ISO and OGC. Secondly, we have developed the actual SOS REST interface as an extension for the GeoService REST API. This SOS REST interface resembles the functionality of the standardized interface of OGC's Sensor Observation Service 2.0, but provides this functionality with REST principles and JSON encodings for observations, features, and sensors. Thirdly, we have included OGC SOS 2.0 standard compliance to the developed SOS extension. This slide shows the key elements of the data model which is based on the observation and measurements 2.0 standard. 
A sensor, or also called procedure, is gathering data for a certain observed property, in this case wind speed. This is a property of the feature of interest, here a weather station. The procedure produces a result with a particular unit of measure at a certain sampling time. Altogether, these concepts are aggregated by so-called observation. In the O&M standard, this model is formally defined and can be represented in form of this UML diagram. For the SOS extension developed in this project, the observation model has been realized as a database schema, shown in this figure. This database schema needs to be used by a map server when setting up the SOS extension. The data model and its implemented database schema are flexible and can accommodate data from various environmental domains. This has been demonstrated for domains such as oceanography, meteorology or hydrology. Before I present the SOS Geoservices REST API, I'd like to show you here a short review of the general Geoservices REST API, which is currently in the OGC standardization process. This screenshot shows an excerpt of that Geoservices REST API, namely the definition of the layer or table resource. As you can see at the bottom, each resource description contains the resource hierarchy figure. The SOS extension designed here is aligned with that general Geoservices REST API and also its specification document looks similar. This slide shows the three core types of resources offered by an SOS extension. There are observations, procedures and features. Now I'd like to demonstrate the developed SOS extension for the Geoservice REST API. In this example setup, the SOS extension has been deployed for a data set from the EA, which has been generated by a network of around 1500 air quality stations all across Europe. 30 days of data were loaded into the database, which resulted in over 1 million observations. This is a link to the SOS extension. As you can see, um, it is part of the XS branch of the map server called Big Observation DB. In our map, we can access this map server. Let's do that here. You see here, this is the link to the ArcGIS server, and here's the map server called Big Observation DB. When I drag it onto the map, we see the 1500 air quality stations from the EEA all across Europe. This is the initial service description page of the SOS extension. It gives us basic metadata about the SOS. The information content of this page is aligned with the information content of a so-called capabilities document returned by the OGC SOS 2.0. We get informed about information such as the title of the SOS, a brief description is contained, keywords are given here, as well as the provider name of this SOS, the website of this provider, information about the contacts of the responsible person for this SOS and also links to the three key resources of the SOS, the observations, procedures and features. By clicking on observations we access this particular SOS resource. We end up on this page here which is the entry point um, to observations and shows information about them. These observations are grouped into so-called observation offerings. In this case we have two, one for carbon monoxide here and one for ozone. So these uh, observation offerings uh, provide us with information such as the observed property here, the procedure which gathered the associated observations and the observed area, so the area where all the associate observations are contained in and their temporal extent here. With the information provided by these observation offerings, the actual observations can be queried using this operation down here. 
And this query operation allows to filter on the observation resource with uh, various parameters. For example, we can query all observations for particular features uh, grouped by the observation offering for carbon monoxide and we want to have all observations measured during the 18th of October 2011 at 10 o'clock Pacific time and the 20th of October. This is defined in a particular temporal filter down here. So we and now we uh, got the result from the SOS, in this case 52 observations here represented as HTML. Of course we can also query the JSON format and we see each of those observations here has an ID, a timestamp, the observed property is given here, carbon monoxide, the procedure and the feature of interest are given and of course most importantly the result value and here in this case 0 0.21 as well as the unit of measure milligram per um, cubic meter here. These information are given to the client so that it can interpret the observation. In another example we can ask for all observations for the observed property carbon monoxide measured within this particular bounding box and whose result values are greater than 50. We ask for this and the server in this case responds with one observation which matches all of those filter criteria. We can ask for observations also in a way that is compliant with the OGC SOS 2.0 interface standard. Therefore the get observation operation down here can be used. This operation provides the same parameters as the REST interface earlier. However, the encoding for temporal and spatial filter slightly differ. As an example, we can ask for all observations for the observed property carbon monoxide measured within a particular bounding box. As you can see here, the bounding box encoding differs. Additionally, we have to define the required parameters for the SOS 2.0 standard. Returned is a SOAP envelope containing observation and measurements 2.0 compliant observation. Similarly, also the sensors or procedures and features as well as the service capabilities can be retrieved from the SOS extension in an OGC SOS 2.0 compliant way with these operations. In conclusion, we can say that we have extended in this project the GeoServices REST API to provide the functionality of a sensor observation service and aligned this extension of the GeoService REST API with the conceptual models of the OGC standards OM 2.0, SOS 2.0 and SensorML 2.0. Further, we have provided the additional functionality of being OGC SOS 2.0 compliant. In future, it is planned to extend the designed REST API to also enable the upload of sensors and their observations. Further, we should aim for formally specifying the SOS 2.0 Geoservices REST extension and bring this into the OGC standardization process. Thank you for viewing this talk. If you have further questions, please visit our project website. There you will find documentation on this extension for ArcGIS Server as well as the REST specification and the documentation of the data model. Thank you.